Hey everybody, Jim Creel from Wild Horses here with you today, and we're gonna show you how simple, quick, and easy it is to bolt a Ford 9-inch rear end together. It's simple because there's only a handful of parts that go into this, provided you have a pre-assembled third member. All you're dealing with is a housing, third member, a pair of axles, some brakes, and a few pieces of hardware and a gasket. So let's get started. So for today's install, we are doing a classic Bronco install. And we've got the housing, it's prepped with spring purchase, it's prepped with shock mounts, it's even prepped with brake line tabs because we know how this one's all going together. So with all that out of the way, oh, also nicely powder coated, and of course you wouldn't wanna to have to come back and weld something else on. So we're ready to go, let's start assembling this. So we'll begin with our lube locker gasket. Next up, we've got our beautiful third member here. Don't be afraid to give it a couple whacks with a good dead blow. I'm just checking to make sure everything is going good as we go along. You got a couple down at the bottom that you gotta literally do by hand. And what I wanna do is make sure the housing seats in nice and evenly. So with our third member installed, now we're gonna focus our attention on the axles and brakes. To start with, you have T-bolts, four per side and they just go in like that. Now we just position our backing plate right over the bolts. And it can sit there like so. So in this case, we're installing some Wild Horses 31 spline axles into this housing with Timken Set 20 roller bearings. Uh, something to note, the roller bearing does not use a seal in the end of the axle tube. The seal is actually out here on the outside of the bearing. The bearings are oiled from the differential oil. So what I like to do is just put a little bit of grease, little bit of lube right on that seal surface so it's not dry going in. So now, slide the axle down the tube, and you're going to engage the differential, and you can see how we come to a stop, and it's stopping because there's steps on the bearing, the end where the bearing goes. So it just steps in, it stops right there, you're good. Next thing up, we just move to our retainer plate and hardware. And of course, sometimes as you're doing this, it's gonna to wanna to push the T-bolts back out. You just push them back in. You wanna get each one started before you tighten anything down so that you can tighten them down evenly. On the end of the axle, there's an access hole to allow you to get to the hardware. And I don't want any bind on my seal surface, so I'm being careful to tighten this in an X pattern, just kind of going back and forth. I'm not just gonna jam it all together at once. I want everything to seat in there nice and evenly. Just to mention it, it's probably easier with all this bolted in, but it's harder to see with it bolted under the vehicle, so that's why we're doing it out here. So I probably will torque this down once it's on the vehicle, but for the sake of showing you how to put it together, I think we've accomplished that here. Set our drum up there, nice and neat. You just do the same thing on the other side. So in reality, I jumped ahead. It's probably easier to put the e-brake cable in before the axle just because you got more room to get your fingers in there. It can still be done if the axles are in, but if you just use a couple of nuts to bolt the backing plate on and then manipulate the e-brake cable into place. So you're just gonna come in and you're gonna carefully 
push the cable up into the area that it's gonna go. And then you can use some pliers and your finger. Screwdriver, and there we go. There you can see the cable in place in the slot. Easily done with the axle already in and secure it in the housing. Make sure he's on, there we go. Moving on, brake hose. It's retained with a breather bolt. Actually, what I wanna do is put a little bit of silicone around those threads. You don't get a lot of gear oil up there, but you could get a little, we don't want it leaking out. Through the hose into the housing making sure not to cross thread. And I'm gonna make it snug, just snug, but I'm not gonna tighten it till I'm finished with my brake lines. Next up, we've got our stainless lines. I like to very much distinguish the word lines from hoses. Hoses are flexible. Lines can be manipulated, but they're not flexible. We just want to get everything in position. Kind of want to take a look at it, see how's it, how everything's going to sit. Now, you are in every case, unless you're taking apart something that's been together for a long time and putting it back together, you are going to have to manipulate the hard lines. See, if I just put that there, no matter where I put it, it doesn't automatically go right in. So there's a little there's a little work, there's a little slight bending and manipulation to get it to go where you want. But what I'm gonna show you right here is super important. We wanna seat the ends of the hard lines into, in this case, the wheel cylinder, on this side into the brake hose. And the way we do that with the tube wrench, tube nut wrench, we tighten it and loosen it and tighten again and what we're doing by doing so is making the contact pattern essentially crush together to form the seal that's going to take place there i literally need some more line so i'm going to get more line by taking some of the bend out of that i'm going to take some bend out of that I'm going to take some bend out of that thing is i need my more line way over here on this side. So I gotta manipulate this guy. At this stage, you gotta be real careful not to cross thread anything. You can start the tube nuts by hand and that they're going in and they're going in smooth. I can come back and manipulate the stainless after I'm done, but I wanna get, kind of get a basic start so when you loosen it then the next time you can actually go farther loosen it go farther and then let's take this off and see if i can show you why we're doing that so you may or may not be able to see the little score on the dome inside that brake hose but we wanna see that little score 360 degrees all the way around. And then we know that our tube nut is pushing the stainless against the inside of the fitting right there. Once again, if you have this all the way tightened down, it's a little harder to deal with because you don't have as much room to work. Don't overdo it either. You can strip this stuff out. We don't want to do that. Okay, then I'm going to go back to our wheel cylinder side, which I didn't really finish the first time around, and do the same thing. Now that I've got that in there, I can manipulate my stainless to get it to conform down here kind of where I want it to go. Okay, now we got our long side stainless hard line here. And I'm gonna start by just getting it hand threaded into the rear hose. You wanna do it by hand and make sure everything's spinning nice because it's easy to cross thread this stuff. And if you just crank it in, then you run into problems. 
Same thing for the wheel cylinder side. Just get it, kind of keep it loose, keep it loose of tension. The tension can all come later. And if you feel like you're cross threading or it's, it's getting too tight, too fast, get it, get it back out so that you don't mess this stuff up. All right, with those just kind of hanging out loose, I'm bringing them out just because I know the U-bolts are going up there. And we're basically ready to install the rear end into the Bronco. That's about it for this video. Easy peasy on a nine inch assembly. You got your housing, your third member, your axles, your brakes, a little bit of hardware, some hose, some lines, some e-brake cables. You can definitely do this at home. You got to have a little bit of patience, handful of tools, but you can definitely do that. Thanks for watching. We hope to see you out there on the trail. Peace.